In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to utilize a database's controlled vocabulary. Specifically, its thesaurus or index and its subject terms. Click on the title for any one of the articles, and then down here you'll notice that the subjects are links. Some of them are more useful than others. For example, if you click the subject link for peer-reviewed, EBSCO will list all the articles that have peer-reviewed as a subject. You'll notice you have over 522,000 of them. This is not going to work. So let's back up and if you look down here in the abstract, you'll notice that Jeffrey Wainwright has had a significant impact on liturgical studies as a theological discipline. By clicking his name, you'll get all the articles that list him as a subject and it couldn't hurt to know a little bit about the fellow who's regarded as a pioneer in his field. And although Jeffrey Wainwright is a more relevant subject term than is peer-reviewed, it's not as relevant as, say, liturgy and theology. This is a good time to talk about how to use a database's controlled vocabulary. A controlled vocabulary is essentially a list of approved terms that provides access points to the database. You'll find the links for the controlled vocabularies at the top of EBSCO's interface. In ATLA, they're listed as indexes, whereas in Academic Search Elite, they're listed as subject terms. But the concept is still the same. So click on one of the controlled vocabularies, and then type in a keyword. You'll notice that when you type in liturgy as a keyword, you're instructed to use liturgics instead, which is the database's approved term. This is an example of how a database controls vocabulary. If you're accustomed to natural language searching, as with Google, then controlled vocabularies might seem pointless or even restrictive to you. The truth is, controlled vocabularies give you greater control over your searches, and thus, greater precision and relevancy with your results. Furthermore, indexing every single article under every possible heading would not only be a nightmare for the creator of the database, but it would be a nightmare for you as well, the user of the database. Here's an example of how controlled vocabularies work to your benefit. The name of SLCC's hermeneutics professor is Thomas Scott Womble. But if you search the database for Thomas Womble, you won't find him because he goes by Scott Womble. Searching Scott Womble will give you results. But if you know how to use a controlled vocabulary, it doesn't matter if you know what his first name is. Let's see what happens when we search for Womble in the database's author index. Here we see the controlled vocabulary heading for Thomas Scott Womble. When we click here, EBSCO will perform a search for that term, and we will find everything authored by T. Scott Womble. Let's go back to searching our controlled vocabulary for the term liturgy. And remember, we're searching Academic Search Elite. We click on the liturgics heading and then choose from several related subjects. Our index lists both broader and narrower terms, all related to liturgics. And maybe as we examine our result list, we get curious about the liturgical aspects of church music. And from the next screen, we're able to further narrow our topic. In our next tutorial, we'll discuss advanced search techniques.